Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your photo news fix. This new world's fastest camera gives spray and pray a new meaning, being that it shoots at a whopping five trillion frames per second. Yes, that's five followed by 12 zeros. I know because I Googled it. MIT might as well throw away the former world's fastest camera because it only shoots at a disappointing one trillion frames per second. Now, that title goes to researchers at Lund University from Sweden who created a camera called Frame or Frequency Recognition Algorithm for Multiple Exposures, or in Swedish, it's called mark, mark, mark. They say the camera can make light practically stand still as it captures moments at 0.2 trillionths of a second. The camera is specifically designed to capture things in chemistry, physics, biology, and medicine. Although, I know a few things I personally would like to see captured in biology. Now let me read you some quotes from the Lund University people that surely will clear nothing up. All right, here we go. Me, 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 me. Yep, that was Beaker. Currently, high-speed cameras capture images one by one in a sequence. The new technology is based on innovative algorithm and inspired in blah, 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 blah. Go read in the description below. Click the link to learn more. But if any of you guys can explain to me how this actually works, please do that in the comments below. We all know I hate watermarks with a passion, especially those awesome ones that go across the entire image, not allowing you to see the actual photo at all. If you've been looking for a solution to those outdated watermarks, you're in luck because a company called exif.co has introduced smart watermarks, and it's actually a pretty cool idea. This is a paid hosting service that automatically applies smart watermarks and other information to your images when posted and shared online, and it does a very good job of stopping people from flat out stealing your photos. Here's how it works. If you right click, an overlay pops up over the image showing important data that you choose to show, like name of the photographer and location. If someone tries to take a screen capture, it pops up some information right in the middle of the image. The company admits their method isn't foolproof just yet, but it does add some friction, which hopefully discourages people from straight up stealing your images. The best example I've read about this is to think about it in terms of a YouTube video. YouTube hosts your video, but allows people to have an embed code to share and post it online. Xif.co allows you to embed your images online, allows people to share them, you can track image views, and even find where the images have been posted online, all while showing people who took the original image. Users can even select the restricted security option and allow it to only be embedded on certain websites. Now the service is free to sign up for, but not necessarily free to use. It's priced on a per thousand view basis, so it will cost you roughly $25 every 100,000 views, and the price drops the more views you get. Would you pay for this service? Let me know down below. Do you want to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course? If so, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to sign up for it right now. Finally, if you're a freelance photographer, you know it's hard to make money. If you're not working, you're not getting paid. The Columbia Journalism Review recently surveyed 30 freelance photojournalists to find out which big name publications pay the most and which are the best to work for. Six publications made CJR's best outlets to pitch list, The Washington Post, Harper's Magazine, National Geographic, CNN, The Failing New York Times, and The Wall Street Journal. I will say freelancing is tough work and generally doesn't pay that much. Now, according to CJR, CNN offers some of the best rates, paying freelancers $650 a day plus $150 for post-production editing. Now, I wonder if that means editing videos or just stills. Next up, you have Harper's Magazine and National Geographic, whose day rates start at $500. Now, if you're willing to shoot in a so-called conflict zone, Harper's will pay you up to $1,000 and National Geographic will increase their rate to $650 or more, depending on the circumstances. 
To see the rest of the rates, be sure to click the link in the description below. From my own personal experience freelancing for Rolling Stone magazine back in the early 2000s, I would get paid $450 per assignment and I would make extra money if they decided to run the photo more than once. Now that's not terrible, but you're also not guaranteed a lot of work. If you could work for any of the publications listed above, which one would it be? And there you have it, that's your photo news fix for today. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another fix. To check out the last photo news fix, click right here. And also, if you like the shirts I'm wearing, there's a link in the description below. Be sure to use the code photo news fix to get a little discount. And there you have it, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.